Good day, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. In a joint offensive, Nigerian and Cameroon troops have killed 20 Boko Haram terrorists on the Talala and Kumshe axis in northeast Nigeria. Army spokesman Cornel Sani Usman said this in a press statement. During the joint operation, arms and ammunition were also captured and destroyed. Three soldiers were, however, injured and one vehicle damaged by an improvised explosive device during the operation. Also, 150 persons, mainly children, were rescued from the terrorists by troops at Kodo. President Muhammad Buhari has rejected an offer by Saudi Arabia to join forces as a coalition of Islamic states against terrorism. A statement by President Spokesperson Garba Shehu said President Buhari turned down the invitation on Tuesday at a bilateral meeting between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia in Riyadh. The president, however, appreciated the Saudi government for its continued support to Nigeria in the fight against terrorism, while King Salman applauded the progress made against the Boko Haram sect and promised to give further support. The federal government has filed an 11-count charge against former Minister of Interior Abba Moro and three others before the federal high court in Abuja. The charges which were filed by the EFCC include money laundering and obtaining money under false pretext from prospective job applicants. Moro is accused of defrauding graduate applicants of more than 676 million naira during the 2014 Nigerian Immigration Service recruitment, during which about 20 job seekers lost their lives. Those joined in the suit as defendants are the ministry's ex-permanent secretary, Anastasia Dana Umobia, F.A. Aleye Bami, and Drexel Global Technology Limited. Nigeria and Saudi Arabia say they are committed to a stable oil market and efforts to support the price rebound. President Muhammad Buhar is currently in Riyadh to discuss with Saudi Arabia's King Salman ways to stabilize crude oil prices, said this. Spokesperson for Nigeria's President Garba Shehu said that the two leaders accepted the fact that the economies were tied to oil and so it was important to make the oil market stable. The two leaders, however, did not elaborate on plans they intend to use in raising the oil price. Former ministers of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have rejected Ali Modu Sheriff's appointment as PDP's national chairman. In a statement issued after the meeting on Tuesday, the group said it rejects Ali Modu Sheriff as national chairman of the PDP due to the illegitimacy of the process that purportedly brought him into office. The forum also expressed its shock at the threat on one of its members, Femi Fani Kayode, by Sheriff. We the People's Democratic Party ministers from 1995 and 1999 to 2015, here in after the first as the forum, made made on Tuesday, 23rd February 2016 in Abuja, and deliberated on recent developments in the party among other issues. The forum rejects al Senator Ali Modu Sharif as national chairman of the PDP due to the illegitimacy of the process that purportedly brought him in. The forum commends and supports the stand of the Board of Trustees of the party for their rejection of the imposition of Al Haji Senator Ali Modu Sharif for lack of transparency and internal democracy in the process. The forum calls for the conduct of Congresses at all levels of the party, leading to a credible national convention that should be held before the 20th of March 2016 to return power to the people in tandem with the constitution of our party and as encapsulated in our party's motto, power to the people. The forum noted with dismay the trait on one of his members, namely Chifemi Fani Kaiwede by al -Haji Senator Ali Madu Sharif. We want to reiterate that a trait to one is indeed a threat to all of us.
Still on Ali Mordusher, former aviation minister Femi Fani Kayode has reacted to the threats made by the PDP chairman, speaking to journalists on the sidelines of the PDP former minister's forum meeting in Abuja on Tuesday. Femi Fani Kayode questioned the nationality of the PDP chairman and his election as leader of the party. Who is uh, Ali Modu Sharif? Is he a Nigerian or is he a Chadian or is he both? That's the first thing. The second thing is that you come in as national chairman or claim you're national chairman that you want to move a party forward and the first thing you do is start issuing threats, which I think is unacceptable and nobody's intimidated. The fact of the matter is this, he wants to set Nigeria on fire. He also wants to set the PDP on fire. And that fire will consume him and him alone. As regards his personal threats to me, I am more than ready for him. I'm waiting for him. And I assure him that unlike anybody that he has ever met before in his life, he will meet a resistance that he never banked on. I'm not intimidated. I cannot be intimidated. And I'll quote Shakespeare for you. In Macbeth, Macbeth himself said something, which I've always found very interesting. It's a beautiful line in Macbeth. He said, I shall fight until the flesh is hacked from my bones, and damn be he who first cries hold. Damn be he who first cries hold in this issue. We will remove him. We will ensure that he does not remain national chairman because he has divided this party. This meeting we're having today will take a decision. I won't preempt that decision. But once we've taken our decision, we will know what to do. And I sincerely hope that all the other stakeholders in this party recognize the fact that this man is divisive, he is unacceptable, he is unfit, and he's somebody that, you know, none of us have any respect for, and he cannot move our party forward. Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says during its 16-year rule, it was able to preserve peace in the country. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the PDP Minister's Forum meeting, Chairman of the Forum, Kabiru Turaki, said this feat has lingered because the party strongly believes that the power belongs to the people. He noted that even while people had predicted the breakup of Niger in 2015, the PDP still kept peace and all Nigerians together. We made Nigeria's economy not only one of the fastest growing economies in the world, but we made it number one in Africa. That is a legacy. Nigeria under PDP leadership became the third most sought after investors heaven in the world, coming only after China and Qatar. That is our legacy. We strengthen the economy and strengthen the banking sector. Today, Nigerian banks are strong to weather any storm, and they have become global practitioners. That is part of our legacy. We've been able to ensure that there was a lot of investment that was coming in, both from within and from outside. Nigerians who were in diaspora had had their interest rekindled and their faith strengthened in Nigeria. Those of them who thought there was nothing good in Nigeria and had checked out had gradually come back and brought their hard-earned money to invest in this country. That was our legacy. We've been able to sustain an exchange regime that was very stable. For over 14 years, the dollar gravitated between 186 and 196. That is part of the PDP legacy. <laughs> We've moved agriculture from a means for subsistence living to become a business. Today, Nigerian farmers have not only expanded the frontiers, but indeed, they are wallowing in affluence. That is part of the PDP legacy. The Nigerian Navy has rescued a hijacked vessel off the coast of Sao Tome and Principe. Pirates hijacked the vessel with 18 crew members on board on February 11th in the waters of Ivory Coast and sailed towards Sao Tome and Principe before the Nigerian Navy intervened and rescued the ship. But that was not before some of the pirates made away with two crew members. Among the crew on board the ship were 11 Indians, two Pakistanis, two Ghanaians, 
one Chinese, one Korean, and one Sudanese. TV 360's Debichi Banamosi has more on that story. Slowly and steadily, two tugboats carefully guided the vessel onto the Nigerian Navy dockyard in Lagos. The Saudi Arabian-owned oil tanker MT Maximus was hijacked February 11th off the coast of Côte d'Ivoire as it transited to Lomé, Togo, with its cargo of 4,700 metric tons of AGO, otherwise known as diesel. The pirates then renamed the ship MT Elvis 5 and removed its radar to conceal its location. Rear Admiral Henry Babalola, who coordinated the rescue operation, said the Nigerian Navy got involved when the ship sailed towards Nigerian waters. This operation actually started on Thursday off the coast of Togo. And an American warship was at sea and they were relaying this to Togo. And from there, like I said, they moved to Ghana and the, the Ghana Navy too was on patrol. They told us to sell them. They, 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 they sold a decoy. They were moving towards our coast and all of a sudden they made a detour and headed southwards. And that was where we, had, we scrambled in Sokwabana and the, another sister ship in Sagbama. And as they were going, we believed that fine, maybe they might be battle weary, fatigued or something. We prepared and then a centenary third ship that is, as we speak, is on standby. And when we got to the objective, we were directing the operation from Nava Equator to Nabuja. After a tense standoff on the waters of Sao Tome and Principe, the naval personnel were able to board the vessel. One of the pirates was gunned down while six others were arrested. The Nigerian Navy, because we have the reach and the capability, we are charged with um, patrolling the common sea corridor between Nigeria and South Tome and Principe. And all of these are ensuring Nigeria's South Tome Joint Development Zone Authority. So that was what we did. And we, uh, we, we, we asked them, they were aware of what we were doing, and then we also informed contiguous navies in the areas before we did that. And then the first thing, this vessel did was that they were, well, we stopped to challenge. They said, No, we are in international waters. And the, our strong point was the fact that we had a JDZ agreement with South and Principal, which maybe was unknown to them. And that was what we did at them. It's true. The idea is that anything happening in another country's maritime space will invariably have repercussions on us. Uh, some five, ten years ago, our waters were extremely unsafe and everything. So we carried out some deliberate efforts. And what happened? The, 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 the criminals um, relocated to Benin Republic. He took a Nigeria Benin joint agreement to have Operation Prosperity. And what are we are witnessing today? They have moved to Togo, they have moved to Ghana. And we fold our arms because the common sea corridor where we import and export our goods are via these seas. And if we don't make deliberate efforts to secure these seas, um, the seas will become very, very dangerous to do business with. There, there, will, be, there will be more in, in terms of insurance uh, premium. At the end of the day, invariably, this extra cost will be tra uh, transferred to, to the consumers. After the body of the dead pirate was loaded onto a waiting ambulance, the crew emerged and walked onto the deck. They were greeted by senior naval personnel and officials from the various embassies. The captain of the ship was full of praises for the Nigerian Navy over the rescue. He also appealed for the rescue of the two crew members taken hostage by some of the pirates. One, one is Indian and another one is Pakistani nationals. So they disembark at the sea around 300 miles from Lagos. Have no idea. They have no idea where the direction, along with around eight uh, pirates in a wooden boat. So now really uh, I, I, I request the authorities the rest of everything is in our face. You can read what you feel. It is in our face. Whatever the internal injuries is, internal mind, everything is in our face. And I thank Nigerian Navy, a man who, who told me when the, when the bullet was passing just 5, 10 mm on top of my head, he said, I'll give you my, I'll give my life for you, Captain. Don't worry. Ha. Nobody in the world will speak such a words. I don't have tears to come. I really salute the sailors and the officers who come to us. The arrested pirates have now been handed over for prosecution while the search for the seamen taking hostage continues. The Nigerian Navy says it is sending out a clear message that not only is the Gulf of Guinea safe, 
but that it is ready to act whenever asked to do so, even when such actions might require it to go beyond the territorial waters of the country, as has happened in this case. DJ Bademasi, TV360 Nigeria, Lagos. President Buhari has vowed to severely punish all those involved in the padding of the 2016 national budget. According to a statement by presidential media aide Femi Adeshina, Buhari described the incidents as embarrassing and promised to deal with anyone found guilty of tampering with the budget. He was speaking while addressing the Nigerian community in Saudi Arabia. He reaffirmed his administration's zero tolerance for corruption. A federal high court sitting in Lagos on Tuesday threw out a suit over the hike in electricity tariff for lack of merit. Presiding Judge Justice Mohammed Idris held that contrary to the claims of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission NEC, there is no indication that an appeal has been listed for hearing at the appeal court. NEC had asked the court to stay proceedings until its appeal against two previous rulings are heard and determined by the appeal court. The application was dismissed and a cost of 10,000 naira was awarded in favor of the plaintiff, a Lagos-based lawyer identified as Toluwani Yemi Adebi. The National Human Rights Commission has set up a special investigative panel to look into petitions and complaints of oil spillage and environmental ruin by international oil companies in Nigeria. The action comes as part of efforts to finding a lasting solution to the age-long problem of oil spillage and little or no compensation paid to the affected people in the oil region Niger Delta region in the country. The executive director of the commission, Professor Bem Angui, said that along with the findings of the panel, previous reports and recommendations made over environmental degradation in the country would be implemented. The Lagos state government on Tuesday announced it has concluded plans to establish the first ever high-powered DNA forensic laboratory in Nigeria. A statement issued in Lagos said the establishment of the forensic lab was part of the state's commitment to criminal justice sector reforms. The state attorney general and commissioner for justice, Adeniji Kazim, hailed the establishment of the center saying it would help fight all forms of criminality in the state. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed has described China as one of the most important partners in Nigeria's quest to develop its infrastructure. Speaking while addressing the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to Nigeria, Ambassador Gu Jia Oji, who paid him a visit in Abuja on Tuesday, the minister said this was a clear reason why the Nigerian government holds its relationship with China very dear. The minister also called for more partnership between the two in areas of tourism, saying China had done very well, especially in the area of domestic tourism. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look at business and international stories. Stay tuned. Hello, you're welcome. You're watching the Funny White Man Show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny White Man. Funny White Man. Funny White Man, but this is where you talk. It's too much. Give me 5,000 man that you. It's too much. So you get to like, make sure you move along the street. Ah, yeah, make sure like, I'm going girl. You know, my own people. Ah, actually. Yeah, fine. It's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm forever taking it personal. I will listen to 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I thought I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do, how we turn up. <laughs> we do the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you welcome. you watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, we will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back. You're watching TV 360 News now. Nigeria's Naira firmed on the parallel market against the US dollar for the second day on Wednesday. The Naira firmed to 310 away from Tuesday's quote of 364 against the dollar 
on the unofficial market. This comes days after President Mohamed Buhari rejected a devaluation of the currency, which has been hit hard by a fall in oil prices. The official interbank rates remained, however, at 197 to the dollar at the close of trading on Tuesday. Nigeria's government revenues fell in January to 370.388 billion naira due to the drop in oil prices, the finance minister said on Tuesday. The revenue includes VAT refunds from state oil firm NMPC and exchange gains. Ade Oshu also said that excess crude account remains unchanged at $2.26 billion. Nigeria, which is Africa's top oil producer and biggest economy, relies on crude sales for about 70% of its government revenues. Global crude oil prices have fallen sharply since mid-2014, halting the country's public funds and leaving many states unable to pay public salaries in time of refund infrastructure projects and other state services. Oil fell below $33 per barrel on Wednesday after Saudi Arabia ruled out production cuts. Saudi oil minister Ali al-Naimi said production cuts would not happen although more countries would join a deal to freeze output while OPEC and non-OPEC producers who support the idea are planning a mid-March meeting. Brent crude was down 76 cents at $32.51 a barrel, while U.S. crude fell 94 cents to $30.93 a barrel. Oil has slid from more than $100 a barrel in mid-2014, pressured by excess supply and a decision by OPEC to abandon its traditional role of cutting production alone to boost prices. Donald Trump was declared winner of the Nevada caucus on Tuesday night, gaining a third consecutive victory in an early voting state and threatening his position in the Republican presidential race. Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, who have been attacking each other this week, are vying for second place, while party officials said they were looking into reports of double voting and not enough ballots at one caucus site. Some volunteers also wore clothing in support of Trump, but officials said this was not against the rules. Nigeria's Minister of Youth and Sports, Solomon Dalong, has revealed that the federal government has decided to settle all the bonus areas owed to the country's athletes. Speaking in an interview with journalists in Abuja, Dalong said President Muhammad Buhari decided to end the low morale of Nigerian athletes by approving the immediate payment of funds for the resettlement of all outstanding bonuses and allowances owed not just to footballers but other athletes that have represented the country. He added that the funds would be used to help the athletes prepare adequately for this year's Summer Olympics in Rio, Brazil. FIFA presidential candidate Prince Ali of Jordan has asked the Court of Arbitration for Sport to postpone the elections to select Seb Blatter's successor. The Jordan Prince also asked for a reassurance over the voting procedures as the governing body prepares to elect its ninth president on Friday. A statement by his lawyer says Prince Ali took the matter to cast on Monday and the 40-year-old already has plans to test FIFA's resistance to the transparent boots by having some of them sent to Zurich prior to Friday's election. Well, we've come to the end of news now. Thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okoro.